All right, today we're going to be sharing how to do the binding and attach the base of the Olivia Baskets pattern, which is one of my patterns. It's one of my favorite patterns. So this is the smallest size here. I am going to be demoing on the medium size, but you can see inside the basket, I the all finished edges, so it's a binding seam in there. So I just wanted to share what first what we're going to be working on today. So we work with bias binding because it's a curved edge on the base of the circle. So I've already attached the seams, but I thought I would share real quick how to attach these pieces of binding together. You want them to line up here, so you put them right sides together, of course, and then you're gonna overlap the seam about a quarter of an inch. And you're gonna sew from this V to this V at the bottom. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. So now I have my seam and I'm going to go and press all my seams open so that I can attach them. These will be ready when I'm ready to attach the binding to the base of my basket. All right, so now I have my basket to the point of attaching the, basket, the, the base. So I marked my um, centers just like this and marked pins and then took those and marked. So I have like quarter marks around the circle and then I did the same thing to the basket as well. I didn't mark the side because the seam is right here, but I used the seam to mark my quarter sections of this. So now I'm gonna put these pieces right sides together um, and you can see, and then I'll just mark this and use my wonder clips and I'll clip this in. So I'm just gonna hurry and clip the base in um, so I can sew it on. All right, so now I have that clipped in. I'm just going to sew it. I'm going to put the base of the circle of the basket against my sewing machine. I love using Soft and Stable for this reason because you can just smash it right out of the way. And you can do that curved seam. And if you haven't used Wonder Clips, you should try them out. The Wonder Clips are perfect for sewing bags with Soft and Stable. So now it's ready to attach the bias binding. All right, so now I have my bias binding, my seams all pressed. Um, I like to fold it in half and pin every five to six inches along the way because when you're working with the bias, it can get off and twist uh, because it stretches so easily. So if you do this, then it helps it stay um, even and so it doesn't twist. All right, so I have my binding ready to put on. I'm going to um, attach it to the side of the basket first and then I'll roll it over and stitch it down to the, to the base of the basket. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see because it's the same color fabric, but I like to leave a tail about that big, five or six inches. Um, so I'm going to just clip here first so that I know that this is where I'm going to start sewing and then I'm just going to clip the rest of the binding on to hold it in place. All right, so now I have this space where they will meet and I'm actually going to stop sewing here so then I have space to join these ends. Actually, I'm going to give myself a little bit more space. So I have just extra binding. Um, so now I know I'm going to start at this clip and end at this clip um, to attach the binding. You can sew with your needle down and that helps keep um, your bag basket in place while you're attaching. All right, so now I need to join the ends of this um, and this is how I like to join my ends for that. So I'm going to pull this um, a little bit tight and put a clip here to just hold it in place and then I'm going to mark these two points onto this binding. So I'm going to call this my bottom binding and my top binding. So I'm going to mark this 
this point where this uh, fabric ends and, and this point right on the corner, um, I'm going to mark that on my top binding with a pin. So I'm going to also pull this a little bit tight and I'm going to clip this so hopefully I can show this okay. So also the bottom fabric and the top fabric of the bottom binding, I'm going to mark on the bottom and the top. They're going to correspond with each other. So I'm going to pull these pins out and use those pins. So I'm going to pull this and I like to use my fingernail and just like make a point where that pin is going to be. And then pull this across and then mark on my top bind, my top half of my top binding right where that point is there. Hopefully you can see that well. So then I'm gonna pull my clips off and to check my angle, I always like to open this fabric up and make sure that my pins are the same um, diagonal as my binding, which they will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to my cutting table and I'm going to cut a half an inch away from this point and this point and that will give me my quarter inch seam allowance here and my quarter inch seam allowance here because you can't add a quarter inch here hopefully that makes sense too um, so I'm going to cut a half inch away from the point from here to here to here you can draw a line if you want and cut it I like to put my ruler down and just make sure that you don't rotary cut over your pins because that will dull your blade all right, so I trimmed my half inch away from the pin and you can see that these angles match. So I'm just going to sew the seam now to adjoin my binding ends. So I like to just kind of smash this soft and stable out of the way to give myself some room and I'm gonna uh, pull these ends together and I'm gonna use these pins to pin this in place. So when I take this to my sewing machine and sew it, it will stay in place like this. You're going to overlap them a quarter of an inch on each side so that your ends match up like I showed you at the beginning of the video. And this is the Biani Stiletto Impressing Tool. It's like one of my favorite tools. Um, so you can see now I have my binding ends attached and it's gonna fit right in, but I wanna press this seam open. But rather than take it to my sewing machine, I'm just gonna use this pressing tool to uh, finger press it in place. Finger press it open, I should say. All right, so I have that now and I'm just going to um, clip this in place and finish attaching the binding to the base of the basket. All right, so now all we have to do is stitch this down, top stitch this down. Um, if you'd like, you can clip this in place. Um, that might help you keep this all, all down and covered. And I like to just pull the binding down around all the edges. But I find that I can stitch it with using my stiletto and I just adjust it as I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I just pull it past that seam line if you find that like you've done a little bit bigger than a quarter inch seam and you have too much uh, bulk in the seam, you can always trim out your seam allowance a little bit because I know that sometimes it's hard to get a perfect quarter inch seam when you're doing these curves. Um, so you can just trim out that seam allowance if you need to. All right, so now you have the, the side of the basket against the base of your sewing machine. And I'm just gonna start stitching this down like that, and I like to use my stiletto for this step because um, it helps me keep that binding in place and it helps me pull the binding over. You can see this has like a, a sand ground tip so it grips the fabric really well. It's one of my favorite tools. Okay. 
and I'm sewing right on this uh, edge of the binding. So about an eighth an inch away from the edge of the binding. All right, so now we have the base all finished. I'll trim my threads. You can see how it looks on the other side. It's just a small top stitch, um, but I love the finished edge of the binding. Um, you can have this basket be reversible if you'd like. It can be that way, but this is, I planned this to be the lining of my Easter basket for my little girls. So I'll show you how it looks once it's all flipped outside, right side out. And there you have it.